Hi, my name is Sabit Palak, and I'm currently a junior in high school. In this rapidly advancing world that we live in today, where many people carry cell phones that have quad-core processors that are much more powerful than the computers that took Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong to the moon nearly 40 years ago, I find it stunning that more than 1.1 billion people across the world today still do not have safe access to plain drinking water. I'm ethnically from the country of Bangladesh, where I go to visit with my family once every two years to see my grandparents. I always knew that Bangladesh was a poor country, but up till the summer of 2010, I didn't realize how deep the problem actually was. But the summer of 2010 came, and in Bangladesh, I met a villager who was affected by arsenicosis, which is a disease that occurs when you have prolonged exposure to arsenic in your drinking water. That villager happened to be very close to where my grandparents were living. As I delved deeper and deeper into her problem, I saw that many, thousands and thousands of villagers around the area were drinking from tainted water sources. This was a big problem, but I found out that there's a solution to the problem. There were filters that were for sale across the local markets. However, when I saw the price tag of these filters, I saw that this was simply not the way to approach the solution. The filters were almost $70, which is twice the amount a villager makes in Bangladesh. In addition to the filters themselves being very, very expensive, many villagers did not even know they had arsenic in their water in the first place. And despite government attempts to test arsenic wells across the country, such efforts have not succeeded, simply because arsenic testing is very expensive and very time consuming, as well as the simple fact that there are thousands of wells across the nation to test and with only a, such a small workforce of people, the government cannot simply tackle the problem on its own. It's also important to know that the problem of arsenic poisoning is not only in Bangladesh, but it's across the world. In fact, there was a study that was published in 2010 that showed that many people in England that drank arsenic water were affected by bladder cancer. And after some research, I discovered these things called iron nanoparticles, which I saw many researchers used online for various things, such as in medical applications, biological remediation and so on. However, there was one thing that I saw that these particles could do and that is to adsorb arsenic from water. And there have been many studies for this sort of use, but what caught my eye the most was a study by Kafri Yafuz, a scientist from Rice University, with his team, in which they saw that you could synthesize these iron nanoparticles from home, using home-based materials. And I saw that I could house these iron nanoparticles inside a biosan filter setup. I'll wait the filter would have to be modified a little bit, but that is a general idea. And I ultimately came up with the idea that these nanoparticles could just be simply poured on top of the filter, and the sand bed inside the filter could retain these particles, thus so removing bacteria from water, whilst at the same time removing arsenic from the water that's within. The arsenic was simply adsorbed to the nanoparticles that are suspended in the sand. For my experimental study, I made three biosand filters, one life-sized and two mini-models. All three of them are functional. This one is made out of a 4 inch wide sewage pipe with end caps, all of which are locally available materials. The body of this sewage pipe contains about a 9 to 10 inch layer of sand, and on the bottom there's gravel. When the water passes through the sand and gravel, it gets, filtra it gets filtrated of any bacteria inside. However, when you put a bottle of nanoparticles inside the top of the filter, you simply pour them down. The nanoparticles percolate the layer inside. And when the water passes through the, the sand and the nanoparticles, both arsenic and bacteria is filtered from the biosand filter. I used both filters and I put, one in, I put nanoparticles in one of them, and the other one I did not put any nanoparticles. And in the results I saw that this filter removed arsenic and this one did not. And uh, right here I have a life-sized filter, which I used to verify my results. This one in real life ultimately would serve a large family. Whereas these mini filters would serve small families, perhaps of four to five members, whereas this one would serve large villages or people with eight to nine members in their family. Ultimately, my filter is, has the potential to be much more beneficial to the consumer than the sauna filter, simply because my filter is much cheaper, from six to seven US dollars in costs, and all the materials used in it were open source, meaning anybody can take any aspect of the filter and freely improve it upon any of their will and they will have nothing to worry about in terms of patent infringement and so on. And there's nothing that is unnecessary to keep the costs up. 
I presented my project in two international fair circuits. One was the Intel International Science Fair and the other one was the International Environmental Science Olympiad. And I got third place internationally from Intel and I got first place in the International Environmental Olympiad. In addition, I got exclusive recognition from the EPA, first place nationwide, for the environmental sustainability of the project. Given the recognition my project received, I knew that I couldn't just simply stop there. Thus, two years later, in the summer of 2012, I went to Bangladesh once again to visit my grandparents, but this time I also brought my pilot filter with me, and I intended to test some of those filters in Bangladesh. And while I was there, however, I noticed that there was one issue left remaining, and that was simply that, how do you test for arsenic? And I saw that testing for arsenic in Bangladesh is a huge unwieldy process and extremely costly. And I was wondering, is there any way that I could test for arsenic using the materials that I already have? I took a deep look into my iron nanoparticles, and I saw that since these nanoparticles could grab arsenic from the water, as in adsorb it, wouldn't there be some kind of a property change, say if I were to put these on a simple homemade test strip? Thus, I said that I set out on my own to, to check this out for myself. And I looked at a couple of basic materials. I took a business card and uh, a tissue and some staples. And I, I made these really cheap test strips comprising of two staples at both ends and with a tissue in the middle. My idea was that if I dipped these test strips inside an arsenic water and I took them out, I would get one kind of conductivity reading from a basic multimeter. But when I took the same test strip and I dipped it inside nanoparticles and then arsenic solution, there would be a conductivity change, simply because iron nanoparticles attracted arsenic out of the water. Thus, I took this idea and I set out to test it out in Bangladesh as soon as possible. And I saw that in my testing, that on the average, whenever there was a conductivity drop of more than 10%, there was more than 50 parts per billion of arsenic in the test sample of water, which is the required limit for Bangladesh. If there's above 50 parts per billion, it's considered dangerous. If it's below, it's considered safe. And that is what I believed was the most important part of any test kit. Because a person in Bangladesh could not care less if he had 200 parts per billion or 3,000 parts per billion in his water. He needs to know if it's dangerous or safe. I tested nearly 30 wells in Bangladesh, and I saw that all of them consistently matched the results with a benchmark arsenic test kit that I had with myself that I purchased in the US for almost 150 US dollars. I ultimately saw that this test kit the one that I developed was so cheap that it's almost a thousand times cheaper than testing with the existing arsenic test kit solutions. Before I left Bangladesh, I established an organization called iCormi, in which I left volunteers in charge of my test pilot filters, in which they would make sure that the filters were removing arsenic and report me in progress every single week. I also left some volunteers in charge of testing using my new novel testing method in Bangladesh and showing me whether these results were consistent with the benchmark testing results that are currently in use in Bangladesh. Every week I'd check upon these results and make sure that these results are either positive or negative. And so far, they're all positive. Overall, my work has the potential to save millions of lives because 70 million people each day are drinking arsenic tinted water. My filter is almost 10 times cheaper and every single piece used in the filter is able to be made in the home of a rural villager, thus it's completely open source. My arsenic test kit is also being able to be made from the home of a rural villager. And the best thing is, the nanoparticles used to test for arsenic first can then be used to build the nanoparticle filter if there is arsenic inside the water source. And overall, the arsenic test kit is over a thousand times cheaper and 40 times faster than the existing arsenic test kits out there. Overall, put together, I hope that my complete arsenic remediation package 
could be the answer to the thousands and thousands of lives that are taken each day from the suffering from arsenic poisoning. It is important to note that a solution is not a solution unless it is accessible to everybody who truly needs it. Henry Ford did not invent the car, but he did invent a way to make a car widely available and cheap for even the basic factory worker to be able to own it and drive it and enjoy it just like everybody else. Thus I believe that such a solution is needed to help prevent arsenic poisoning in anyone for them to enjoy a life that the rest of us have the privilege to live.